Hi guys, a very warm welcome to Motorhoming Adventures. Motorhoming Adventures. Absolutely, this is our new channel and the old one being? It was, it was offshore and onshore adventures but here we're going to bring you all things motorhoming, the UK, Europe, further afield, who knows. Absolutely and we'll also be bringing across some of our original films that are on our old channel or motorhoming films of course and we'll be bringing them on to this channel so you don't miss out absolutely yep yeah. so stay tuned all things motorhoming technical trips travels you name it it's great to have you along yeah absolutely and if you enjoy the channel please do subscribe oh, of course please do subscribe and of course the odd like is good too Thank you. Just if you're new to the channel, I'm Nikki and this is Bob. Thank you so much to all our new subscribers. Mm. Um, today we are off to Cardigan. We are indeed. You'll remember perhaps that two or three weeks ago we popped over to Cardigan to get a warranty issue looked at. It was the it was the amber light of doom, the engine management light, mm. um, and that turned out to stop the um, start-stop system going. Uh, when you pull up at traffic lights and stuff like that. Um, so it was a change of a filter which we're going back to do today. But as well as that, you'll also remember that I promised you we might try and get onto the Weybridge um, that they've newly installed there at uh, BV Reese in Cardigan. It's for sort of MOTing vehicles of this size. Um, and uh, part of it, of course, being an MOT facility is that it's got the ability to weigh. So... Um, Loaded up we are, you'll see that later in the film, loaded up as if we were heading for say Spain or Portugal or France that we're going to do later this year, purely to see um, how the weights uh, on the axles and on the overall weight of the van are now that we've got it uh, just about filled up and I'll tell you during the film you know what we've added to the van to try and make it a realistic weight. So um, join us for that trip to Cardigan. Um, for the warranty work and then particularly uh, keep tuned for that uh, motorhome weighing, weighbridge, axles, mass in running order, you name it, we've yes. got it. Yes, and I've eaten three chocolate brownies this morning God, just yeah. to add to the load, Yeah, to make, yeah. It, make it more realistic. It's very realistic that, yes, three, only three. Yeah. Oh. That's fairly reserved, fairly reserved. Well, I, know, you, I, think. I know, yeah. Three, well, just... we'd probably have to cater for more than that if we're in France. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, <laughs> jo join us uh, for our trip today to Cardigan. Very nice too. Back we are at BV Reese. It's the back end of the garage. Four course out there. So... Uh, just waiting for the technician to pop down and then um, fingers crossed we might get a chance to get on the way bridge because the one here does front and rear axle and that's what I'm interested in, as well as overall of course so that would be um, some very interesting figures and um, if we can get that if we can get this on the way bridge then uh, uh, having loaded it up this morning in anticipation of us being able to do that then I'll take you through um, what I've added to the van um, to get it to a sort of realistic weight that we'd be travelling abroad and, um, and we can then start to look at the figures and the data to see, um, to see how that uh, vehicle weight comes against the mass in running order and against the maximum vehicle weight and those sorts of figures um, which hopefully will help some of you um, to work out um, the issues of payload and um, you know and what uh, what little or what lot of leeway you have or haven't got with your own specific vehicles um, as you travel because um, it's a bit of a mire of uh, a mire of different data and weights and information and uh, so what I'm going to try and do is um, convert it into uh, plain English and um, and you'll hopefully be able to see uh, see some of the issues um, that we encountered when we were making choices as to which chassis and which weight of vehicle we were going to go for. Yeah. 
So, onto the new ramp here at BV Reese. Just had it, um, just had it installed specifically for uh, larger vehicles, and of course MOTing uh, motorhomes and similar. Can tell by the super shiny floors. Look at them. Eat your breakfast off those. Fantastic. In fact, it'll be good to see under the old girl. See if she stood in one piece after our exploits with the puncture. So, our excellent technician here has just found that this is loose as well underneath. That's just one of the supports for the handbrake cable. So, apart from fitting our new filter, he's also going to sort that out. The advantage of getting up on a ramp. Here you see, um, these are our uh, dropout points. Grey one there obviously is for the grey waste itself. And then further towards the back, I'll show you where the, um, when the heating cuts out, or should I say when the heating drops below temperature. Here we go, that's where that's where it drops all the water out if it drops below i think it's four degrees but if any of you know differently stick it in the comments below something like four degrees and that's when this truma combi 6e drops all its water out through there so wow the underside of the 4.4 ton Still looks relatively intact apart from that bracket for the handbrake cable. Just gone over 3,000 miles now, so, and she's been over a lot of England, Wales. Not, not yet beyond, but will be. And the uh, sensor that we're going to replace is just up in here. It's the one that tells the start stop to work or otherwise as that warning told us and there is the part we've been waiting for to drop in underneath here so under here and the front way here we've got our uh, that's our 60 litre on this 60 litre diesel tank and then sitting behind it here you'll see that's the add blue tank um, that's 20 litres the add blue there is an option in fact on um, the ducatos to increase that 60 to 80 and it brings the tank sort of much further this way um, but this is the standard 60 litre diesel and so what di has been telling me all about is the fact that the warning we had which was the start stop being unavailable um, is because that sensor had failed but the sensor itself doesn't um, really have any effect to play on the start stop what it's sensing is whether the mixture coming through is too lean or too rich um, through the exhaust gas and then it would make adjustments as to um, how that flow of diesel add blue and all that sort of thing was coming through to the engine but because that sensor isn't working quite well enough, the, um, the system says, well, I'm not gonna use or not gonna stop the engine just in case it can't restart or it won't restart. So the first thing that uh, that, that creates therefore is the lack of stop start, even though it's not directly part of the stop start system. Um, so yeah, really, it's um, what we should see as well, um, as Di was telling us usefully just then, is that we might actually see a better use, um, or in other words, the vehicle using less add blue, um, because the, the sensor being faulty can sometimes affect that balance, and uh, you can then end up using more add blue than you need to. So right up the front here, is the diesel particulate filter and then it comes back there's a NOx sensor NOx nitrogen oxide sensor there then the catalytic converter then here you can see this nice shiny piece here is our new sensor um, just at the back here there is another NOx sensor 
Um, so the last point that the exhaust gas goes over is the new sensor that we fitted, uh, which is the particulate matter sensor. And that uh, is the final, final pass, if you like, of exhaust gas uh, coming through the vehicle. And it's that sensor which uh, decides whether the mix is too lean, too rich or whatever, and makes the adjustments from a computerised point of view back through the engine. So there you are guys, that's the offending tiny little piece uh, which has now been replaced, took all of about 15 minutes, if that, um, with some very useful advice from Dai on the way about those other bits that I've just showed you. Uh, and of course he tracked down that the handbrake cable just here, that that uh, bracket is off and he's just going to secure that one up for us as well. And we also saw, just noticed, that these are, these are actually turnable by hand. So, die bless him, he's just going to tighten them up as well. I might as well have a look around the other side while we're at it. The things you see when your van is up at eye level. Yeah, these ones are, uh, these ones are loose as well, die. That's bizarre, isn't it? Same place on both sides. Worth coming to a ramp once a week just to have a look round it. <laughs> you were falling off. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't be like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a tighten properly in the first place. Well, I'm sure they weren't. Yeah. Worth keeping an eye on those, though, isn't it? Yeah. Look, they're all. These are, some of these are at weird angles. They're tight though, but yeah, <sighs> good old. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Run around the uh, just running around the screws of all the underside here. Having found those, they all look all right. Yeah. I was just chatting with Di as well about having had our puncture episode about under slinging a spare under the van here because I know a lot of you on the form the um, motorhome sites that I've uh, seen have added them uh, added them to the mobile vetter as well and that's the point where you put your uh, brackets where they've got these holes here and then back here you've got some threaded threaded holes here which is where you fit it. Um, only uh, the only question it raises for us would obviously be the uh, handbrake cables um, and whether they would interfere but it might be something I'll look a bit further into after that puncture escapade. And so with all those useful bits found out, including a few screws tightened, a handbrake cable resecured and the new particular matter filter changed, down we come. But yeah, very interesting to see underneath and indeed to spot all those loose bits and pieces. Weybridge next. And there we go, connected back up onto the laptop. No DTCs present. And no faults. So that's cleared the lot, which is fantastic. Excellent. A fault clear van and some tightened screws. So, just positioning it up. See if we can get the uh, the weighing process started. So we've got a. So this will be real, will it? Rear wheel coming out, uh, rear axle weight. So you get some print out there front axle 1683, rear axle 2344 kg. Which gives a total of 4027 kilos. So there we are, guys. Um, there's, the, there's the axle plate. So it shows 
4,400 kilos, that's our total uh, allowable. Then uh, axle one, which is the front, you've got 2,100 permitted on that. Axle two, which is the rear, 2,500 on that. This figure here, this 6500, that's like a train weight. So if I was towing or anything like that, that's the maximum that uh, weights that the vehicle contents and the trailer and whatever was on the trailer can come to. So 21 and 2500. So let's just have a look again at those, um, at the printout that I've just got from, uh, just got from Die. Um, so that actually gives us um, 1683, so remember we had 2100 available, 2344 on the back, and we had 2500, so that one's a bit closer. Um, gives an overall weight, therefore, which is uh, as you can see, just adding the two together 4027. Um, leaves us uh, the balance between 4027 and 4400. So, what's that? 73, 373 kilos. Uh, I could still add to the vehicle, albeit there's obviously uh, you'd probably want the loading to be slightly more towards the front and the rear because we've got a bit less to play with at the rear, albeit the rear still to be fair, 344 still gives us uh, 156 kilos we could add, which is a massive amount when you consider that the only thing I've got to probably add on the exterior of the vehicle is the uh, awning, which is uh, 39 kilos, we know that. Um, but it gives us a lot of leeway there. So um, anyway, I'll show you in a minute, show you in a minute what's in the garage, and that will give you a flavour then of, uh, of why the rear axle's obviously loaded up a bit more, a fair bit more on the front. So a quick check on, uh, give you a rough idea what we put in the garage to get us into sort of lightly load for Spain and France. A um, couple of the bikes, um, little toolbox, some uh, various fluids, grey water, a um, bit of toilet blue, stuff like that. The all important barbecue, of course, and a few odds and sods in those. Then the um, camping chairs, the aluminium bit, that's a telescopic ladder box at the back there, that's just a camping table, the um, levelling ramps, and then the black bag there, which is the um, which is a kayak, inflatable kayak. So um, that's the back of the van, um, and as you can see, just a few odds and sods. Let's just have a quick look around the other side. Yeah, some odds and sods in these lockers and uh, stuff like that, but nothing else sort of major. And then, I guess the only other things to um, quickly mention would be we put the extra hab battery in, extra habitation battery in, so that's uh, over 20 kilos, and I'll let you know what that is. And then um, around this side in these lockers, just got the um, uh, the two different hoses, one long, one short. Two different electric cables, one long, one short. Um, in there, I've got two 6K propane, two 6 kilo propane, and that's about it. So that's the. Um, so that's how we loaded it up and then uh, what I'll do then I'll show you just how we sort of took it through and worked out then from roughly what you're seeing here and of course the stuff that's in the van and or water fluids things like that um, I'll just take you through probably the easiest way to do it we just take you through the um, the spreadsheet of uh, of the data that uh, that then allows you to come to the sort of weights uh, and then more particularly and more especially how that then translates to what we saw at the Weybridge um, just a little bit earlier and those weights um, which uh, which hopefully you'll uh, find a interesting and b of some use if you're doing what we did in trying to decide um, you know which chassis you might go for and what sort of loads you'll be carrying okay let's go and have a look at the data so um, let's have a quick look at the figures then. We were we decided obviously on the layout, we decided that we were looking at Mobile Veta and then it was a case of um, which chassis did we want. Uh, they offer a 3650 and then they offer an upgraded, which of course costs a bit more money, at um, 4.4 tonnes, 4,400 kilos. Um, so it was a question of which one do we go for and 
Um, you then look at their what they call their mass in running order figures, the ones on green there. The mass in running order um, is also a key figure because that, once you've uh, got that figure, that allows them to supply you with an approximate payload that you have left. In other words, for everything else you're going to add to the van from when you drive it off the forecourt, as it were. Um, for Mobile Vetter, and manufacturers do differ, for Mobile Vetter, the, in red there, that's what they allow uh, to go into the van um, to uh, create the mass in running order. So to the base vehicle, they add a, one person, a driver at 75 kilos, they allow for 100% of fuel, they allow for 20, li 20 litres of fresh water. The fresh water tank in this takes 120 litres. Um, and the grey water takes uh, 110. And they also allow for 20 kilos of gas cylinder. So as you can straight away see, um, the, the, that figure there is obviously based on the stuff in red. So that's only one person in it at 75 kilos. Well... I'm certainly not 75 kilos, I'm more 90, and um, uh, albeit Nicky's less than 75. So combined, um, the two of us in there are round about 150 kilos total, and therefore, once you've taken off that 75, then you're left, uh, as your allowance if you like, you're left then with 80 kilos um, roughly, which is what the two of us in the van would then equate to. Um, so potentially then you see your payload now for the automatic version of the two different chassis is down to 297 for the 3650 chassis and 996 kilos is left for the um, for the 4.4 ton chassis. So it was already looking as though we were going to have to go for this one because of the things we were looking to put in the van um, you know, as and when we go to Spain. Um, so uh, let's just look at some of those figures. Um, if, for example, you said out of the 120 litres, you might take, and we do take, a small amount between sites, say, um, to allow for whatever, be it washing up, be it um, toilet use, be it anything. So let's say you left 30 kilos of fresh water in. Uh, for the kettle, we always carry some um, bottled fresh water. Um, and we normally carry about eight two litre bottles. So if we put that in as a default grey water, there's always something in there. Again, I said it takes over a hundred grey, but if you imagine you're taking uh, almost the minimum you could perhaps, if you stopped off say for lunch, so that might be 20 odd um, litres in there. Black water, we'll put a nominal amount in there. Would have some with your fluids and your rinsing through. Um, the gas bottles, they allow you remember 20 kilos well, two, um, I have two six kilo bottles, and if they're full, they're actually 32 kilos in total. The awning that we're going to add to the van shortly, that's uh, we know that's 39 kilos. The Malenko ramps, the levelling ramps, uh, they are 7.6. Um, so uh, the we added that extra battery, if you remember, in our other films. So that's uh, 25 kilos, one of those ways. The two bikes that were in the garage there, in total, uh, they weigh 47 kilos. Uh, the inflatable kayak, that's uh, 23 kilos, uh, together with paddles, you know, stuff like that. The barbecue itself and all the bits and pieces uh, that go with it, about 15. The table chairs, um, they come in at uh, about 13 and a half. Um, Obviously, the uh, add blue, they don't mention the add blue in the mass in running order figures. Um, they say it's got a 20 litre add blue tank, um, albeit I think I've only ever managed to get 10 in it without the dreaded blowback issues. Um, and the ladder that you saw there that we had in the garage, that's, uh, that's about 8.7 kilos. So, and then you've got all your things like all your bedding, your electrics, your hookup cables, crockery, cutlery, toolbox food, um, stuff like that, that you might keep in there. Um, so I've worked out a rough figure there at 34 kilos. So you can see if we look at the totals here, that's added, and that's not an unrealistic addition 
of what you'd be traveling with or what we might have been taking through the tunnel and you can see now that the payload for the 3650 chassis has now gone into the negative so um, the doing it doing a sort of exercise like that particularly of course I mean there's just the two of us but if you start to add children as well um, then uh, you know if you're traveling as a family then very quickly that initial figure for payload gets eaten up by the second person in the van or indeed the third and the fourth if you're traveling as a family so and these were quite low fluids um, that we added on this occasion so that was a you know that equates to what you were looking at in the van there was about in the garage etc was about just over 400 kilos left us with 670 still payload um, if we went for the 4.4 chassis so it was almost a no-brainer as you can see what I actually did um, when we went to the Weybridge there is, is I assumed the worst, if you like, in inverted commas, um, is that I ran with, I went into that garage with a lot of water on board. Uh, I went in there with about 100 litres of fresh and I deliberately ran some through into the grey. So I was carrying probably 80 to 90, let's say 90 on the worst. Black water was about that and bottled water was that. So... Um, so I did have extra water weight so obviously that then dramatically puts that overweight um, it, it made us when we were on that ramp at the Fiat garage it made us uh, with those additions we were uh, about 540 kilos just over and that's why uh, that's obviously why these figures are slightly higher um, but still you know if you take away some of that water that's what we added what 80 kilos there and about we added about 150 kilos so even if you took away the 150 kilos in water gray and fresh you still would have probably had that figure would still have been over the rear axle weight of the 3650 chassis um you're, of course, worth mentioning as well, the legislation actually says you can have plus or minus, obviously more relevant to be plus in this case, you can have plus or minus 5% um, on these weights. Um, so that would give you an extra, if you said 5% on 3650, it would give you an extra 182 on the smaller chassis and 220 on the bigger one. Um, but I didn't really want to get into, um, you know, getting right up near the tolerances of the chassis because obviously you've got tyres are pretty highly inflated anyway at nearly 80 PSI. Um, and I don't really want to be running everything on maximum weights and, uh, you know, to, for obvious reasons um, to keep things and to keep motoring as safe as we can. So, um, so even with the fluids right down low, it gave us, as you saw, it gave us the... Um, the fairly low payload if we take those figures away and leave it back at 20 and 30 which is a relatively small amount um, it still saw us uh, overweight on the on the 3650 so that was it it was uh, definitely the 4400 uh, chassis um, it meant that uh, we obviously had to pay a bit more than that but um, even with those extra figures, as you saw, it still, even with the extra fluid that I went into the garage with, it left us plenty of room um, for either taking, of course, um, people with us when we go abroad, which is an option, um, or indeed for uh, those occasions where you might have more than these amounts of fluid um, in the van. Um, so hopefully that's made a bit of sense of what we saw at the garage, what we then saw back here, um, what I showed you was in the garage um, that we might be going abroad with to France and Spain and, um, and how we got to deciding therefore which chassis to go for. But hopefully that's uh, just sort of demystified some of the payload issues uh, that you hear about and the mass in running order. Um, and would help you perhaps to uh, to do a similar sort of process that we did to, to arrive at what you realistically want to get as a van as a start point. And so just a reminder there, back to the um, back to those finally to those figures there, which were the all important ones on the day. So we were in there with a lot of fluid on board in the grey and fresh, but it still gave us that. Um, quite a quite a high figure on the rear axle as you'd expect because the fluids are towards the rear axle um, but even with the lighter fluids would still have been a problem with that rear axle and uh, and of course the consequences with that you know um, 
I didn't really want to go anywhere near those consequences, be it, um, you know, overweight or uninsured as a result of being overweight. Um, it just has, a, it's just a mire of uh, lots of grief that. So, so stay well away we did with the 4.4 tonne chassis. So we hope all of that makes some sense and we hope that you've enjoyed the film. Indeed, yes. If your head's not exploded with uh, weights, axle weights, mass in running order, then uh, you've done very well. Uh, but um, I thought it'd be useful. I've seen a lot of discussions on loads of different forums about the subject um, of weight, motorhome weight, which chassis should you go for? And we went through the same as you might be doing that are watching this film. Um, so um, you can therefore get a feeling from today that, um, yes, it's about what you add to the van, but then, of course, it's about uh, what the axles weigh, whether that puts you overweight um, and therefore potentially uninsured, um, things like that. So definitely something to pay attention to. Probably looking back on our buying of the van, it might be the uh, might even be the top of the list of things to consider when you first start on this um, journey to buying a motorhome. But um, hopefully that's been of use today, guys. Um, yeah, and we uh, hope that you'll join us on our next film. Yeah, very much so. Um, look forward to seeing you again soon, and uh, thanks very much for watching. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.